Looky, look at what we got here. It seems to me, boys, that we have a Canyon Arrow Road spotted in the wild, ridden by none other than the king himself, Mr. Matthew Vanderpool. Now, this was a picture that was uh, a video sent to me on Instagram uh, by a gentleman who posted a reel with him riding up with uh, Matthew Vanderpool up a climb. And it seems to be that this is the new and revised version of the Arrow Road. I say revised because it doesn't have crazy characteristic changes that we can see visually there are some which we're going to talk about obviously but there's nothing that really jumps out to us right from the get-go so uh, we do see a handlebar change we do see, see, see uh, a seat post change some rear state changes um, and also a little bit of the geo as well in terms of like the frame and how it looks we'll talk about all that stuff but uh yeah if matthew vanderpool is riding it uh, i'm pretty sure this thing's probably going to come out i would assume around tour time maybe at a race beforehand but uh and this is, seems to be a common thing throughout the industry now, i don't know if just bicycles have become uh peak engineered we don't know mr peak torque might be able to tell us that but it seems like these companies are just making and releasing revisions of bicycles instead of doing full-on facelifts and changing the game and everything like that we saw it with cervello and the s5 they had great success with that where they just basically took their bicycle and tweaked it uh we see it with the uh which probably will be the Canyon Air Road. Um, and there's a couple other companies out there as well that just kind of took what was there and tweaked it to themselves and moved forward from that. So are we reaching a plateau of bicycle engineers? We'll see in the future. But let's jump through this bicycle. So we're going to start off with the front end of the bike, and then we'll work our way down to the back of it. As we can see here, one of the biggest things that stands out to us is the handlebar and cockpit situation. This is definitely different from the original uh, Canyon Air Road. We can see here on this picture right here, that the handlebar is much more flush, much more straight, and then it's more cylinder right here. Whereas on this picture that he is riding on, this thing much looks to be like almost like a right angle. Uh, looks a little bit more girthy and looks a little bit more rigid. Uh, I don't know if it's a, a stiffer bar for a better uh, sprint, a better climbing on there. It looks very similar to the revised bar they did for the Grail, except I don't see the exposed cables that they featured on that bicycle for easier to pack up and pack down. Um, there's also a photo of, it looks to see like the, the Garmin is under here. There's also a photo of a uh, famous uh, race car driver who was riding around on his Canyon Arrow Road here, which looks to be like the photo of the Grail bar where it has the out front mount where you can go ahead and change out for arrow bars and very easy accessories. You can see right here on the top of this uh, handlebar here. Let's zoom this in. I know, I'm sorry for my green screen. Let's see if I can put this in here. Enhance, enhance saturate sharpen it clear it i don't have a anything but you can see right here there's a discoloration of the bar which matches the bar of the grail which they have all these different accessory swap outs and everything like that um this seems like in this handlebar but if we go right back over this photo right here we don't see it on this bar i don't see here so maybe they'll have two different versions of the bar maybe like a race version and maybe a more accessorizable bar who knows in the future and we'll have to figure out what the headset situation is uh it probably will be the same thing where you're able to go ahead and adjust the the stem height at home but maybe they made some revisions to that as well with different uh headset bearing sizes or maybe a larger steer who knows we'll see second thing to look at is this area right here the frame doesn't look as deep as it once was we again go to this picture right here this frame looks really really deep it comes out way more, it comes out way more. But also right here, if we're looking at on the, the image I just showed you, it seems like it comes out more and straight down, whereas this seems like a more connection down. If you look right here, we'll go boom. Not you. See, it has more of like a, a perforated line and it looks like the front fork rakes out a little bit more. It looks like the more wheels elongated more and the front fork's raked out. And this has more of a pronounced line than down tube. It doesn't even look like the down tube is as thick as it once was. Boom. Boom. Camera one, camera two. Let me get you guys a better picture of it. See, down tube, down tube. Maybe they made some changes to the forks. Maybe they want to go ahead and uh, allow for a bigger or wider tire on there. So maybe that was the reason for it. We'll have to figure this out later on during launch time, but definitely changes to the frame itself. Um, fork looks the same, maybe a little bit more girth. Love that word, love that word. Maybe a little more width on this front arrow fork as well. And we're seeing this kind of trend go throughout the industry. 
the SL8, the Factor Ostrovam, um, the, S, the S5, we're seeing that frontal area of the bikes, especially that fork area, have more aerodynamic uh, uh, geos to it. Fucking word. I don't even know what that word means. But more aerodynamic uh, shape to it. And they want to continue that because that is the first area of contact with uh, dirty wind there. So now let's move on to the back side of the bike. All right. Let's take a look at here. I was really focusing on the bottom bracket to see if they change it from a press to a BB86, but it seems here this rear stay of the chain stay is very thin and still has that same kind of smaller bottom bracket hole. I would assume that's a BB86. If anything, I would have thought they went into like a T47, but that doesn't seem to be enough room to fit that that T47 BB style. So it looks to be a BB press fit 86 on there as well. So no change there, but. There have been so many solutions nowadays. You got BB Infinite, you got Hambini, you got Wheels Manufacturer, you got Nova to Ride. You got so many almost like these one piece machine bottom brackets there that if you have any kind of BB creaks or any kind of frame misalignment with the BB holes, um, there are ways to fix that. And uh, a good bike shop and a good BB can definitely fix any kind of creaking or cracking you're hearing or any kind of um, uh, crank or uh, spindle wear on there. So it looks to me like that's very similar. I have a video up, which I'm going to show you guys before. I did a video on the Canyon Air Road. It did really well back in the day, over 106,000 views. I can see a lot of people love Canyon. And I was blown away by the actual overall quality of the bicycle, and Canyon still does have a stronghold on the price. Let's be honest with you guys. Consumers, the first thing anyone looks at whenever they're buying something, unless you're uber rich, is you consider budget. What is your budget? What is the price point? And I definitely think that Canyon will always take the cake in that category, and that is definitely the front runner for a lot of people in terms of looking at bicycles. It's unfortunate to say, everyone knows I run a bike shop. Uh, I sell more stuff of that. They're a main competition, but uh, the proof is in the pudding, and yeah, they definitely take that. But looking at this bicycle right here, uh, it looks to be, I was even looking at the frame. This, I was like, this looks a little bit sharper. This looks a little bit thinner, but it, at the end of the day, there's not enough evidence there to make it look like it's any different. It looks pretty sharp. It looks pretty similar to there as well. Um, going to this image right here. Hold on, I'll pause. Now, this is more of a dead giveaway to see that this is a new revised Canyon Air Road. Pay attention. This is the older style model. The rear seat stays come up, boom, boom, and then they split. They stay two separate entities, and they split into the frame, and it seems here that the new Canyon Air Road, that these now have a meeting point. And now this is a little bit more arrow in the back of there. And you can see it looks to be like it comes down a little bit, ah, eh, maybe the same. But not only is that a connection point and a giveaway that this is a new revised model, the seat post area where this connects at is much thinner. It seems like they went with a smaller seat post. And this is probably for the reason of compliancy and comfort. Um, with a thicker, larger seat post, extra thickness, extra thickness on there, uh, you that will translate into your riding. The vertical compliancy of a thick seat post that looks like a two x four, that will get a lot of, uh, uh, you'll feel a lot of vibrations, you'll feel a lot of the bumps in the road because of the fact that there's not a lot of bend for that seat post to give. So with this, we have a little bit thinner seat post and we have a little bit thinner, uh, what looks to be a seat post housing. And it seems like the seat post clamp is right here as well. So they put in a proper seat post clamp, I would assume, right here in this area. And then right here, I did kind of a side-by-side -side so you guys can see the difference of it. I'm going to move my fat head out of the way real quick. But over on this side, much larger seat post area, much larger seat post housing. And it, like I said, it does, it depends on the sizing, but it does look like they drop these seat stays a little bit more. And we see these on the Candel Super 6 as well. The Super 6, <laughs> uh, dude. The Candel Super 6 uh, Evo 4. Um, that they're running a lower seat stays again. Again, that's all relating to compliancy. We want to make sure that the rider is comfortable for those long rides. But yeah, it seems to us like there is a new bicycle on there. That's all the things I can get from this picture itself. I, I didn't really see anything else on here in terms of picture wise. Um, let's look again one more time real quick. The down tube looks to be a little bit skinnier compared to this down tube. So basically what they're probably trying to achieve is maybe a wider tire size if it's possible, but 32s are really, really okay. Um, maybe removing a lot of the weight off of these bicycles. 
So shedding some of the carbon that maybe they felt was excess, that maybe that carbon wasn't really doing anything. Uh, yes, the aerodynamics might be better, but they might say, well, let's try to make this bicycle a 6.8 climber with also aero bikes because now everyone's doing it all nowadays, even though they already have a Canyon Ultimate, but people still prefer an aero race bike for race day, or pros do at least. Um, so it just looks like they're shedding away some of the carbon fiber right here to maybe achieve a certain weight and also add compliance to the bike while maintaining aerodynamic characteristics. So we can see here, smaller down tube, smaller seat input, smaller seat post, um, a meeting point point for the uh, seat stays as well, and then that kind of elongated part there. And then we'll go right here as well. And also the new handlebar on this situation. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Are you guys excited for this? Or do you think they needed to do more on this bicycle? I mean, hindsight's always gonna be 2020. We can see here night and day back and forth and say, I would have changed this, they should have done this. But at the end of the day, they're probably getting feedback from pros and uh, you know they already have a bicycle that's really really doing well in the market everyone wants to change and make a facelift but when you have the world champion and the guy who's literally dominating races now he can probably do it on whatever bicycle there is uh why take so much from it and change it listen to the riders feedback take note of it change what you can to go ahead and make this maybe a more of an enjoyable ride with adding some lightweight characteristics and maybe some speed characteristics and there you go. So have we reached peak engineering for bicycles? But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you again so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great weekend.